Welcome everyone to today's video where we're going to be looking at this very cool 4K drone by Ruko. It's called the F11 GIM2 model. So first of all, just have a look at the box. It's got this really nice kind of like a metallic pearlescent finish to it. So let's open it up and see what's inside. So we're greeted with this really nice carry case or protective case that already comes with the drone. It feels quite hard wearing, it's got a nice finish, like material to it, and the zips themselves are covered. So when you open it up inside, there is a protective sponge layer over the top. You've then got a zip compartment which has got your usual stuff in, like a user manual, a few warnings. Inside we've got a couple of charging cables which will be for the uh, battery of the drone and also for the controller itself. This product for the price actually comes with two batteries which is really cool and they actually last quite a long time. I won't go through the user manuals because, you know what, I'll actually show you later on in this video how to set up the drone and get flying. So first of all, let's take the drone out and have a little look at it. First off, it actually feels and looks really nice. It's got like a sort of a satin finish to the plastic, if that makes sense. It does feel quite weighty and durable and it comes packaged nice and safe. Let's have a little quick look at the controller, which first glances are really, really nice. I actually think, in a weird way, that this is actually nicer than my Mavic 2. It's quite cool how the actual spare battery in the box comes in this little section that slots into the case itself. So everything's really nice and protected. So I'm just showing you that this is the spare battery that you do get with the drone in this box. It's actually quite cool to keep the battery uh, in the box in the actual case because it keeps it nice and snug in there but obviously you know you could probably get rid of that box. The batteries illuminate with these nice blue LEDs again very counterintuitive you know if you've used a lot of drones before then this is the sort of thing you expect. So back to the drone itself. So they come with these little like cardboard paper covers just to keep the props not from sort of moving in transit but obviously you can remove them once you've got the drone and you're flying it just bin them. But the props fold out really nice, they have a nice kind of clunky feel, nice and safe, they kind of lock into position. You've got various like warnings on there which you can just peel off like about the gimbal protector. It's nice that it comes with that, very easy to take off. And then the camera itself which actually looks really nice. With it having the multi-axis gimbal just like a lot of the high-end drones, you know, I'm really excited to actually try this out and see what it is like to get nice footage. It does state it's 4K and now I've seen the footage actually after flying, I can actually say that the quality of the footage is really good. Batteries just come out with a simple sort of pressing two buttons and pulling it out and then slots in and clicks in really nice. And again, just to fold the props away, I always do the bottom ones first and then the top ones. And as you can see, it folds in really nice into a nice, comfortable, manageable size. Back to the controller. What I love is how nice and compact it is, but then everything folds out. So you've got the actual phone holder there, which just flips out towards the top. And then you've got the two arms that come down. They're obviously just actually for you to have more of a comfortable grip on the controller. You've got the usual protectors on there, which are always satisfying to take off. And it leaves you with this really high gloss piano finish, which just looks so premium and high quality. And it even feels it. It's not cheap plastic. You've got nice textured areas. You've got the high gloss. It's a really nice controller. The joysticks also feel really nice and grippy and safe to use. So next thing is to get outside. I'll show you how to set up the drone safely, get flying and see what the footage and the live feed is like. Right, okay, so we're outside. Let's get this Ruko drone set up and go for a fly. See what, see what it's like to fly, see what the features are like. So, let's take this little gimbal protector off, which is cool that it comes with as well, nice and easy, because sometimes these things can be quite hard to actually take off. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I will do a screen recording so that you can see sort of everything that I see. And what we're gonna do is gonna go to the Ruko app and we'll go to, you click on controls to ensure safe, etc., etc. start. Don't need to watch a safety video. So unfold the arms, done that. Remove the gimbal, done that. Long press on the drone. 
not sure if you heard that, but basically does a nice little jingly, jimey chime just to let you know that it's been turned on. Let's go to next, unfold the antennas. Let's do that. Unfold the phone holder. Da -da -da, unfold the handles and long press on the transmitter. I didn't actually need to long press it, just pressed it on. So it's saying connecting and it's saying it can take about 40 seconds. So let's just get my phone mounted. And actually one thing straight away to point out is I love this phone holder. It is so nice to use. It's very similar to the old sort of way of, say, DJI Phantoms. This is how you used to use it. So you control a sort of down here with your buttons and then you had your phone mounted up there. Whereas the new, more conventional way with a lot of drones is the phone goes here at the bottom. But actually, it's nicer to look up. But anyway, right, so we've done that. Let's go to next. So now it says we need to enter the uh, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, not connected. Let's find our Ruko connection here we go ruko gim 2 tap for options now do this because it's saying basically it hasn't got a connection it'll disconnect you so you want to say yes that you want to stay connected let's open the drone app back up again so we've connected we've done that so now we've got to rotate the drone in that direction it just did a little beep do it this way and then we heard two beeps so that confirms that it's done Move the left and the right joysticks, it's saying to the one o'clock, 11 o'clock, sorry, and one o'clock positions for gyroscopic calibration. So let's try that. Check GPS signal, set the flight parameters, push the left and joysticks to the five o'clock and the seven o'clock positions. And there we go, the props have started up. Now I'm gonna fly just right now. Let's just go to okay. And here we have the live feed. So at the top right, I don't know if you can see that, but it says 29 of the props have just stopped probably because they haven't taken off. So that's a cool actually safety feature. It does that. So if it notices you haven't done anything, it'll automatically stop. So that's cool. It says it's ready to fly. Uh, we've got GPS mode. We've got a good strength. And yep, at the top right, you've got your memory card, which you can format. So, and you've also got buttons here. You've got your zoom in and out. You've got the angle of the gimbal, the camera. You can take pictures and you can record. So I'm just gonna click record, which hopefully you should see on screen now. But I'm gonna put as the main background now. It won't be my point of view. It'll actually be the um, recording from the actual drone itself, as well as the screen recording so you can see what it's like. So I've just started the props again. Let's get up and have a fly. Right. So, I just wanted to actually show you, it's a little bit windy today. It does cope with light winds, but when it's heavy winds, the drone isn't very good in heavy winds, but I wouldn't recommend that with, with any drone, really. That is keeping nice and smooth. Really, really happy with that. That is really good. So, it looks like it's been calibrated correctly. Let's go up and have a little fly just to see what it's like to actually fly first. So, the footage won't look great, but I'm just going to manually watch the drone and I just want to see what it's like to fly. Flies really nice, really smooth. Yeah, that is really cool. Now, actually, one thing to point out on this drone, uh, it might be good to show you actually sort of quite close to me. But if I click this little button, bottom left on the screen, the first one is camera mode, which if I'm go fully back, Look at that and fully forward. Oh, the wind is going in that direction. So it's probably helping the drone. Let's actually do it this direction. So now if I click this button again, it's gone to normal mode, which yeah, I can already tell that that is all, oh, yeah, that is definitely faster. So now let's click it again and it's in sport mode, which is not much faster than normal mode, gotta admit. It's not massively faster than normal mode, maybe a tiny bit, but what we'll do is I'll probably just keep it in, let's try and just keep it in normal mode, let's say. All right, let's go up and just again, have a nice little bit of a fly around. It's quite a nice shot that, looking over the bare tree into the fields. So I've gone to a height there of 90 feet. It's quite responsive. Just pitching the camera down a little bit. Look at this field. Let's go out into the field. It's flying really nice and smooth. 
over towards the river. Let's gain a bit of height. That is nice. That was quite a nice little cinematic shot. Let's bend back around to me. That is nice, that. The live feed is awesome. The live feed is, I would honestly say, just as good as my three times more expensive DJI Mavic. That is a really, really good live feed, honestly. I think for the price point, that is excellent. Really happy with that. I mean, I'm not sure if it is, but it looks HD to me. Oh, I just heard a train. I mean, this is the perfect time to use the zoom. And again, look at that. I've zoomed into the train in the distance. <laughs> That's cool. You're not going to get cinematic footage from it, but look. Look at how far away it's zoomed. And again, oh, look at that. That is really cool. So what I'm going to do now is actually, let's try the return to home feature. So let's fly the drone. You know, a good little chunk away from me first. So we're 200 feet up. And we've got quite a bit of a distance, right? Let's try the return to home. Confirm return. Oh, the wind has picked up. I can feel it hitting me. Let's see how well it copes. So, because I've got the parameter set, I think, to full height, that the drone is actually climbing first. That's fine, I'll just fast forward that. So the drone went to a full height. Whoa, it sped right over towards myself. So the drone went to that height because I've set it in the parameters at the top, just of everything I had maxed out. But actually in reality, I don't need it to be that high. What's interesting is I think it has, I think it's just reoriented itself. It's just turned around to be in the direction that I actually took off from which is cool. So it's, I think it's repointing back in that direction. And if you look at the distance, it's hovering around like uh, 2.6 to 3 feet away from myself and the height is dropping. Let's just see exactly whereabouts it comes to. Okay, Stop I can see that's right above me. So I'm just going to cancel that for now. And now what I think I'm going to do is let's try a couple of the other features. Right, let's try. We've got loads of different features here. Root, roots. Let's try the root one. Now let me just change this to satellite, just so I can see where it is I'm going. One. Let's do it just in front of the pavilion. We'll go down the field. Sort of middle of the field. And then back again. Slide to start. Let's click back on my live feed. Cool, look at it! It's flying in the direction that I've set it to, so I don't actually have to do anything. So if you actually just want to have a nice straight set route, you know, all you can do is, I think I can control the gimbal. Let me just see if I tilt it up. Yeah, there we go. The gimbal is just tilted up, tilt it back down again a little bit. And it's actually following the route that I have set out. How cool is that? Look, and it's turning. There we go. And it should be going towards the middle of the field. I can see it there. So it should be going over these pylons, just past this centre pylon, and then it should be turning back around and coming here. That is really cool. That is a nice feature to have. Do you know what? There's actually a feature that, you know, you do get in your higher end drones, and it's just nice, something nice to have. You know, you don't have to do the flying. As long as you use the satellite, make sure you're safe with your surroundings, with your heights and whatnot. And uh, yeah, just let the drone do the thing it can do. That is very cool. Right, let's do image follow. Start. Right, so I'm going to have to bring this down now. Let's bring this down. Let's get it closer to me. And there I am. So let's draw a little box. I've drawn a box. Is it going to follow me? It's following me. That is cool. Let's try and outrun it. Nope, let's try and confuse it. Can it keep going? Can it keep going? Can it keep going? Can it keep going? It is! <laughs> that's really cool. I mean, don't, you know, granted, I'm not like perfectly in the center of the shot, but, you know, if I was maybe to go and have a, a good run off into the distance or something on some fields or whatnot, or on a bike, then yeah, it would follow me. That is cool. All right, we can turn that off. 
And you've got various other things here. You've got filter, zoom, which I've shown you. Music, I'm not too sure what that is. VR, so obviously if you've got a headset, it looks like you can do it with that. And the lens angle just means you can see um, the actual angle of the lens itself. Yeah, I've got to admit, that is a very, very cool drone. Let's get a nice good close-up of it. That is the Ruko F11 GIM2. Yeah, I can honestly say that is a really good drone for the price point, honestly. But yeah, the thing with this drone is, what I feel like is it's like a in-between drone. So, you know, because it's the £500 mark, it's not a cheap drone in regards to, you know, you can get beginner drones that are quite cheap, let's just say like £100. But they're the type that, you know, you're not going to be too bothered about if you do, you know, crash it. And, um, you know, you've learned some of your skills on like sort of how to fly a drone, but the quality is terrible and the live feed is bad it only goes about 250 feet so then this one it looks like it can actually go quite far out the live feed is really good it handles itself really well i was very happy with that i would say in stronger winds it's not going to be as good as a higher price point drone i mean you can actually see by looking at it you know it's not very aerodynamically designed you know you've got some really flat faces here whereas obviously ones like my more expensive mavic granted it is three times the price of this has a much more sort of slipstream look about it but even with there is actually quite a bit of a light winds here today i'm not too sure what the max speed is but you know it's safe to fly but there is some winds and it has coped quite well with that but anything stronger than some sort of light winds i think you are going to struggle with it i did come out the other day when it was very very windy and yeah it was very hard for it to fight against those winds but granted it was quite strong and you shouldn't really fly in those winds the controller on Honestly feels great in my hands it's just like using a DJI product and I know uh, me and my channel I do associate a lot of the drones I test with DJI just because it is my favorite drone but as I said the price point of that drone is for pure cinematography it's not a toy you know it is for producing proper cinematic videos it's three times the price of this but this actually feels just as good if anything I actually think it looks quite a bit nicer and i actually prefer this i prefer having the screen above the controller i just think it's a bit more counterintuitive to have the controller in my hands and look up rather than having to tilt and look down at a screen and away from potentially where the drone is in the distance if i'm holding the control like this i can just sort of you know now and again i can look into the distance and see the drone whereas i'm looking down here i know it maybe doesn't feel like a big difference but actually honestly having it up here does feel really really nice it does look and feel quite of a quality product. I like how it isn't like a battery charging one. You do charge it via a cable, via the USB, just like you would with any other high-end drones. The gimbal seems to work very well. It seemed completely stable. When I was up in the air, it didn't once have any kind of little crazy mechanical issue where it might have glitched and uh, messed about, but no, it didn't. It seemed to work very, very well. The only downside from it is when you do tilt it completely down so what i mean is it doesn't go 90 degrees looking completely down flat so you know if you are looking for shots like that then you've got to bear that in mind that this doesn't go one like completely 90 degrees but apart from that i would honestly say for a dji user i can honestly say that that gimbal seemed to perform very well via the live feed anyway so i'll leave the video there everyone look if you are interested in getting this drone then i, I can honestly highly recommend it i think for the price point of 500 pounds it is worth it it's a very good drone for somewhere between a beginner and someone wanting to produce full cinematic footage you want something that flies well it's got a multi-axis gimbal it's got good battery life it's got a very good controller it's got great live feeds you know, there's a lot of good stuff going for this thing. I will put a link into the description so you can get one yourself. So that's it, everyone. Happy, safe flying. See you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.